Hey guys, Linus is getting catch up, so we're just going to start the show while that happens. Um, there was a massive DDoS that happened in the last couple days. I think basically just today, but anyways, it brought down Amazon, Twitter, Spotify, bunch of different kind of huge stuff. I couldn't tweet all day. That was actually kind of frustrating because like I'm trying to tweet super badass pictures of Compensator 2 and it's like, nope, 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 failed to nope. send tweet. Nope. Would you nope. like to retry? Yes, doesn't do anything. Nope, PNG. GG. Nope, PNG. I know, available on all models cars, including the Model 3 once that comes out, which is pretty nuts. Unveiled, speaking of unveiled, speaking of revealing, Nintendo confused us all with the announcement of the Nintendo Switch, uh, which I am super stoked on, uh, on chatting about later, because I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to agree with you, or I will agree with you, but you're going to buy it anyway. Yep. Um, and Razer purchased THX. <laughs> I still don't. <laughs> so, so we'll be back. I mean, uh, next uh, next they're gonna say that like Taylor Swift's on their board of directors. In other news, like Luke is dying. So, <clears throat> yeah. if he's not here when we come back from the intro, you'll know what happened. <coughs> that happened last time too. And it wasn't even scripted. That's gonna be the problem too, because when I laugh, that makes it happen. And last one goes by myself, so it's easier to not laugh. No, you're here. <laughs> Alright, well, cable mod. I, I fixed it. Okay, you gotta do the eating contest. Yeah, there you go. Line of tips eating contest. So, so, I guess we're gonna start with N Nintendo Switch. So I can just talk about this. No, I wanna talk about that too! We don't need Linus's input on this at yes, all. Yes, we do! <laughs> so, it's like... It's a handheld that's also a console uh, that you can put the controllers on or you can take the controllers off and you can use the controllers independently for two people or just one person and you can maybe do like local network play wirelessly, maybe and there's Skyrim and there's the new Zelda game and there's a new Mario game and like there was tons of stuff that was more or less announced in this video but not like spelled out on screen which was really interesting. Like the new Mario game, they showed it, but they weren't like, hey, new Mario game. Which is kind of interesting. So people weren't really paying attention, they'd just be like, oh yeah, Mario. He's everywhere, they put him on everything. But no, it's a new Mario game, pretty crazy. Um, it's super weird. With that said, it's not exactly like a, like a groundbreaking, No. you know, revelatory sort no, of- No, but it thing. would, it would make Oh, really, hold wait, hold on. No, 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 you gotta stop. Whoa. There's a new Nintendo console, and there's going to be a new Mario game for it. <laughs> no, um, that's it. Enough internet for today. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, it's a, kind of a weird announcement. Um, I'm back. <clears throat> that was it. We had heard for a while that there was going to be some kind of like console and handheld thing that was in the rumors for a long time. Even so, I didn't really expect this. Because the dock doesn't really look like it does anything other than applying direct power and video pass through, I think. I don't think there's any compute happening there. I don't think there's anything else happening there, especially because when he, when they go to pick it up and they go to switch or whatever you want to say it, um, when they pick it up out of the console, if you already have the controller bits on it, which you can just leave the controller sides on the console if you'd like, uh, because this switch bit right here, this left controller and this right controller can come right off and then they rail in on the sides of this bit right in the middle of the like console box. I'd, so th then that becomes kind of like the tablety part of the Wii U, which like if it, if it works the same way is actually pretty awesome. But then like, what? Ah, uh, it's a we against it in every way, but it's, it's weird. It's very weird. And so another announcement that came in parallel that for whatever reason is, isn't in our notes, I'm actually not sure why that is, but another announcement that came in parallel was from NVIDIA where they said they're going to be the ones providing hardware yeah. for the Nintendo Switch. So this is interesting for a couple of reasons. Is that... And it, like... Okay, so number one is that it means Nintendo's portable is actually going to have, like, programmable 
a, a programmable GPU in it for the first time ever, instead of some like custom random thing that they sort of stapled together out of like some arm cores and whatever yeah. else yeah. they kind of found on you know banggood.com. If, if you want to like dive more into that, go look at like the technical diagrams for the Wii U. Whoa. <laughs> Some weird stuff. It's part of the reason why people have such a hard time emulating those kind of games. It's just because it's it's just weird. It's running on super weird hardware uh, sometimes. sometimes. Um, so the other thing this means is that we could be looking at kind of a tablet-like form factor. Um, and, and the whole concept seems kind weird. of like a, like, oh man, how do I describe this? Like somewhere between... The NVIDIA Shield tablet, which is really confusingly named because now they have NVIDIA Shield Android TV and the NVIDIA Shield tablet is actually like discontinued. They have the somewhere between the NVIDIA Shield tablet and that weird... What was that thing called? What? I reviewed it. Um, I don't remember The Razer Edge Pro, this stupid thing. What? So it had this uh, gamepad controller. Did I work here when we made this? Doc thing. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Okay, I remember this. Old there you go. Ago. That thing. Okay, yeah, I know this. So it's kind of like this thing. This is old. Which was uh, it was like a it was like a 940M or something. I it even say. says like it's a tablet. Specs? It's a mobile console. Yeah. Um, tech specs. USB ports. Thank you for <laughs> that, Razer. Um, wow. Oh, okay, because it's the because I'm looking at the gamepad controller. Okay, fine, 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 fine. So it added more I.O. and blah, blah, blah. Okay, what was it? A 640 MLE with Optimus technology. So this, this is a while back um, until Core i7 dual core with hyper-threading. doesn't even say what generation Core i7 it was. So, okay, apparently so like, the audio quality is fine, but it is apparently cutting out sometimes. I have it from a relatively reliable source. Okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to solve that. Yeah, I don't really know what to do because I'm not moving anything. Like, I'm not touching it. We still got a Twitch Prime sub, though. Hell yeah. Terrible audio, still getting subs. Wow. Um, That's what's up. We appreciate you. So it's kind of like, like that concept. But what I said about that at the time was cool concept, way too heavy. Like, totally impractical from a battery life and a weight perspective. Okay. Then we got the NVIDIA Shield tablet, which didn't really take off. There was that battery recall. That, yeah, that um, hurt. That hurt that product in a big way. And then it just kind of disappeared. And if we look back at the timing for when it disappeared, I do wonder if what we're going to discover is that might have been around the time that NVIDIA locked in a deal pretty close. with Nintendo. Looking at, like, console creation life life ranges and like how Maybe, long uh, there's been rumors about the nx coming out yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it was like six months later that rumors about the nx started kind of starting i mean i like i'm just trying to i'm trying to figure out like when did nvidia shield tablet youtube like let's find out when our video went up and see if it makes sense so actually no i don't think that's long enough because the tablet k1 unboxing no wait okay initial reviews went up in August 2014. So if Nintendo saw that, that was probably enough time for them to at least pivot the development of the Nintendo NX. Because you've got to remember, too, Nintendo is developing their own first-party AAA titles for it, and they've got to make sure that those are going to run on whatever it is that they end up with. Yep. So a couple interest, a couple more interesting things here. This is the first NVIDIA GPU uh, win, design win, in a console since PlayStation 3, and actually one of the only two, now that I think about it. AMD has been the GPU powering pretty much everything for the last little bit. Xbox One S, Xbox One. Haven't they been one. taking hits on that, too? Um, mm, or, like, not making much, at So least. my understanding is that it's not like amazingly lucrative like it was in the xbox xbox one playstation 3 generation yeah but that it's like it's xbox not like they're losing original. money on it. no xbox one no oh, xbox okay. original i okay. think xbox original they ended up doing pretty well wait no xbox original wasn't that nvidia as well gpu I'm in sure. xbox in original xbox i thought it was like equivalent to like a pentium 3 um like 733 megahertz and then 
it says finding MB2A. stuff on this is gonna be kind of annoying. Uh, code, it, yeah, the GPU was co-developed <coughs> by Microsoft and NVIDIA. So there you go. There was that one as well. Sort of co-developed. Kind of. Um, wow, hey, I got the CPU right. <laughs> 733 megahertz Intel Pentium 3 copper mine. Hell yeah. Go Linus. He remembers a thing that no actually, one asked him about. I actually liked that console. Um, I liked the like terrible logo. And do you remember the controllers that were way too big for anyone except for like my dad? Those okay. Those cool. Let's talk about controllers for a minute here. Let's go back to... Oh, they're horrible. Let's go back to oh, the picture of the, of the Switch. Here. Okay, so this I think will be fine. Uh -huh. I honestly think when you have them railed on the side yeah. of the screen, it will be fine. Because my favorite controller to use with the Wii U is the big tablet with the screen in the middle. When I first saw it, I was like, I'm going to hate this. And then it got to the point where if I was using anything else, it was a worse experience. And my only like proper compromise, in my opinion, was a pro controller if I okay. wanted to play something. How much of that is the second screen experience, and how much of it is just the uh, the more comfortable spacing comfortable. of your of your elbows? It's comfortable. So, so like, give me a percentage. Um, probably almost entirely comfort of the elbows, because I wouldn't really look at the second screen. I meant like for playing Mario Kart. Yeah. Like I used to play Mario Kart all the time. I used to stream it and stuff. I would use that controller even though I was never looking down. Because you could look down to see, I think, the minimap, or you could look on the main screen <laughs> for a way better view of seeing the minimap and still be able to see where the heck you're going. So yeah, I didn't really care about the second screen. Yeah, second screen for gaming, I'm really not that sold on. It was kind of cool as a fifth player aspect in the Mario platformers. You could play like a godlike kind of character and put down little platforms and stuff that only lasted for certain periods of time to like just kind of have some fun. But like so many Nintendo things, there's like one first party title and then. Yep. Yep. Yay. Yep. yep. So it actually kind of feels like they're trying to get away from that, which is, I think it was Ubi. I'm not entirely sure, but it could be Ubisoft, said not that long ago, like, oh, we think Nintendo is going in the right direction with their new console, blah, 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 blah. So I think that has a lot to do with the less things that I think are kind of cool, but a little bit gimmicky deals. Now, look at what I just noticed. Oh, no, never mind. I thought this plus symbol was a plane, and I was like, whoa, it has data. <laughs> but no, that's just a little plus symbol. So... I mean, I guess that's all fine and good for people like you whose forearms are about as big as my biceps, but are you concerned at all about controller weight? If you have to basically have the gaming console... I mean, okay, okay, so a couple I don't things. really do you, think so. Just... Do, you, do you think the second screen makes a comeback? So can you use the... Can you plug this... Like, are you expected to wirelessly transmit... No, 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 okay. not at all. Okay, so if you So if second you screen's are... dead, do you think? Uh, from what they've showed us in this trailer, yeah. yeah. They, okay. they didn't use it as a second screen at all. Not even once. Um, what happened was, if you, like, is this a screenshot or is this? This is just a screenshot. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you go to a different part of the video, mm -hmm. he docks it actually with these controller arms yep. still on it. That's the way that I would use it because I'm going to lose these things, <laughs> just to be honest. So right. I'd rather it stayed on the screen so that I don't lose it. Um, and then the, like, box that you can put these on and yep. use them as a controller. So let's go back to that picture. Um, <coughs> oops. Oh, no, not that. Not that one. Let's go back to the other one. OK, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this looks right. That thing looks horrible. It is oh, really ugly. Oh, man. I don't know. I'm not interested in using that at all. My plan <laughs> is to take <coughs> both the controller arms, rail them onto the console, and then just never take them off and not use this stupid thing and just use the, the new Pro Controller that they've got, which looks almost identical to the previous Pro Controller, which is fine. So there you go. And like, I don't know if you saw the other scenes, but they, they'll like take these off and yeah. use them as singular controllers. So like you can just have- Just flip them, by, flip them on their side, yeah. Yeah, so you could take, see how this thing is actually slotted in? Use the, uh, yeah, here. Slot so that's in. slotted, that's how you're supposed to play if you want it to be on the TV. So it isn't a dual screen experience. Unless maybe you like have a second one, but then again, yeah, no or one like except an accessory. for one weird third party, or one weird first party is gonna actually do it. But anyways, um, so they like took the thing out, brought it somewhere, I don't remember where. There's a little flip on the back of it so they can set it up as like a little stand. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be holding it the whole time if you don't want to for the yeah. arm fatigue thing that you're talking about. 
And then he handed one of these half controllers to someone beside him who turned it to the side and started using it as like a sideways Wiimote kind of deal. And then he used the other. What infuriates me about that is that they're different. Yeah. Ergonomically, that's a mess. They're not the same. Yeah, so one person is going to be flipping it down this way, and the other person is going to be flipping this up this way. And this person's thumbstick on the, yeah. is in the middle, and yeah. that one's on the end, and then yeah. these, like, wow, yikes. Even, like, on screen telling you what to do, this one's arrows, that one's... A, B, X, Y. So tell me this, though. I mean, this is... Uh, okay, I'm actually... I, I'm going to present an argument counter to yours right now. Okay. So tell me this, though. As the owner of a Nintendo Switch... Okay. When your buddies come over, and you use your Pro Controller, and you guys are just playing some stupid, like, platformer, where four buttons and a joypad is enough, are you going to invest in two more Pro Controllers for your buddies, or are you going to make them use the bitch controllers? Knowing Nintendo... Their previous controllers probably work. Do you think they will? Okay, we saw we saw. I honestly think Wiimotes are going to work on like, this. Like Wii to Wii U, I can see the logic in their in their mind of going, okay, like a Wii controller should work on a Wii console. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have compatibility because it's not like Nintendo. It's quite different. It, it, it's not like Nintendo has never been known to kill interoperability mm -hmm. for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are still a Japanese company. <laughs> um, okay, I think... I think... I have a feeling motion is dead. You think so? I think so. But I, I don't think that interplay is dead. So, like, I think you'll be able to use a Wiimote sideways for platformers and stuff. Hmm. I don't think... I don't know, but I don't think that motion is going to be around. And I think they're completely ditching the VR aspect. Although I have seen some people talking about, like, the cloth headset ideal. Or idea, not ideal. Where you have, like, uh, what is it called? Daydream? Mm -hmm. You know the Daydream headset thing? Yeah. Where they could just release that and then it's like, oh, Nintendo VR! Blah. I just hope they don't, to be completely honest. Um, and then... Yeah, I think I think motion is gone, and Nintendo's going back and just deciding that they want to kind of bring their mobile and their console together a little bit, and there you go. So this is Nvidia's wet dream. Oh yeah, this oh, whole thing. Yeah. This is this is what Nvidia has been trumpeting from the rooftops for years since since the first Tegra, I guess. It's been a while. Yeah, since the first Tegra, which is probably like, like you got to imagine years ago Nintendo now? walked up to. Nvidia, and we're like, oh, you're doing some cool stuff. You want to work us? This? Yes, please. Like, yes, this is what we've been trying to yeah. do with our with our portable graphics technology. We haven't been able to get anyone to get on board, so we've had to make our own products, which we like totally didn't want to do, and we like totally screwed it up, and and this sucks. Um, we just want to make GPUs yeah. and compute things. We just want to make like really, really cool GPUs that are like super power efficient. We want someone else to put it in something and support it and make games. Like, lordy. Um, so, okay, okay. Motion so is heavily rumored by trustworthy leakers, apparently. So maybe these little things are motion control, but then I kind of think that's going to suck. Well, yeah, but the original Wiimote sucks. So, like, is that... Yeah, but Wiimote Plus Somehow is a surprising? Yeah, okay. Still, like, you know, selling, selling the Wii, or even Wiimote of like you can have lightsaber duels <laughs> is, 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 falls under somewhere between very deceptive and like litigation worthy. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know, man. Someone said, I wouldn't say motion is gone. It's just not a focus. I definitely don't think it's a focus unless they yeah. no, for have sure. like another trailer in the future where they show like different things, but they, they didn't show any focus. And there's plenty of time for that. Oh, there is. There's quite a while till this is going to be launched. I still have so many questions as to like, like what's this, like what's this little notch? Yeah, there's a little notch in the, the back. They can't see. What is? It's okay. Oh, uh, um, I didn't realize we weren't screen sharing. There's a little notch in the back of the controller. What exactly does the dock do? Is it only video pass through and power, or like, is there more to it? I doubt there's more to it. I doubt there is too. Yeah, again, but like, that's like. If they, it's, just, they just didn't answer that question. Like, no. this to me looks like a beefed up NVIDIA 
Tegra-based tablet. With some rails on the side for controllers. With some rails on the side for a controller and with Nintendo's first-party IP ultimately driving the sales. Yeah, because Zelda, so everyone's going to buy it. Is this an attempt to lower software development costs? Pro By consolidating the two, the two platforms, now they don't have to have a separate develop, development team working on like mobile games, mobile Zelda versus... Uh, full-size console Zelda, they can just kind of go, like, could they, could they double their output to their install base of sellable games by just doing twice as many Zeldas, twice as many Marios, and doing them all for the same platform now? Probably. I, I, this is just <coughs> kind of spitballing, like the business Probably. decision that goes into trying to make a one-size-fits-all solution. My girlfriend had some interesting kind of ideas for this. I'm just going to bring it back um, up since there's like... Which was like... One of them was optional side quests that make you bring it into portable mode. Hmm. So, like, if you're if they mix like the the like vague concept of the Go games, like Pokemon Go, um, and make it so like, oh, okay, there's an optional side quest for you to like go do something that's 500 meters that way. So you have to like get up and off you have your to butt. Get up, rail the controllers on the side, walk away with the console. Go over there, do something while you're over there, or like go up this much elevation or down this much elevation or whatever. Oh, that's, I guess that's hard in some areas. Here it's not. Um, I thought that would be interesting. I seriously doubt anyone will do that ever, <laughs> but I thought that could be kind of fun. There's, there's a lot they could still do with this, but it does simplify things. One, like, I'm sure there's people in the chat where there's like more or less confirmed rumors or whatever, but I've been trying to stay away from rumors as much as I can. At one point in time, only once did I see him put anything, or her, or whatever, the different people that were in the trailer, put anything into it. Mm -hmm. card sized thing, so it looked like a Game Boy game. So one, Game Boy game compatibility, maybe. Mm -hmm. Two, is that the new media? Right. Maybe full games are sold on this like small size thing, because we've seen SD cards in huge capacities yep. for a long time. SD cards. You could put any game <clears throat> on an SD card today. Any game. Yep. So, so like, uh, are they changing the media format? Is it no longer going to be a disc? I don't know. I don't know, man. It's pretty interesting. I wouldn't mind saying goodbye to discs, that's for sure. I was I, actually playing a game on my SNES on the weekend. I was like, wow, no loading. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I would be cool with getting away from discs i do still like physical media right i just i don't know yeah yeah because I, I hate the idea of like like this thing doesn't look very big i wonder how much storage it has probably not enough <laughs> who's been screwed over by the nintendo store before <laughs> probably everyone that owns one of their consoles <laughs> like <laughs> i'd rather own the physical media just so that i know that it's going to work next time i plug it in yeah i uh, um i have two wii's Long story. Um, Do you? Two Wii's, long story. <laughs> and uh, one of them has all of my Nintendo Store purchases on it. <laughs> Broken disk drive. <laughs> <laughs> and, yep. it, and it turns out, and this, uh, this again is like, like hardware revision, console. But this weekend, I actually had to go on eBay and buy a refurbed optical drive for it. Because if I bought a new one, I would lose. <laughs> because I have an RV001, which has GameCube ports on the side. So I have to buy from some cheesy eBay store some refurbed optical drive. That's like, it's a known bad part. They fail all the time. <laughs> so like the fact that that one still works today means absolutely nothing about two weeks from now. Yep. And... Uh, that's the only way to solve that problem. Yep. So I will be doing that when it arrives. Um, like you said, have you, oh, I guess I could have just swapped the optical drives. Yeah, isn't... Mm. No, I bought one. Well, whatever. Well, does that one have the right optical drive? Uh, yeah, they were both launch units. Oh, okay. I, I literally camped out multiple times for the Nintendo Wii. It was the one and only time that I have ever camped out for anything. <clears throat> All right. 
We've got people upset about trying the other end. Trying the other end? Trying the other end of the cable. I don't think that's it, though. I Yeah, it's definitely not the A side. USB A is pretty much always fine. Okay. Well, that's in. I don't think that's going to solve it. Uh, oh, oh. I, yeah, but I think that's like, I yeah. It's I, delayed. Yeah, I don't think that's, anyway. All right. That work? So, moving on to, have we only done one topic? We've only done one topic. We were like, no. it is kind of an important topic. Um, but let's move on. So, original, Are you interested? Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Nintendo NX. Or what are they calling Switch. it now? Switch. Terrible name. Switch. Oh my god. It sounds so much... This looks a little trashy. I'm going <laughs> to put that in there. There we go. Um, <laughs> I only noticed that now. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Um, We're Twitch streamers. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, dang. Um, I, I hate that name. It, it super sounds like an accessory, which like sucks because the Wii U sounded like an add-on for the Wii, and now the Nintendo Switch sounds like... And the Wii sounded like a penis. So they're like, they're like 0 for 3 yeah. in like the last 10 years. Yeah. How can you, how can and you like, do it wrong? And like Nintendo so Switch doesn't, it's not, it's not a sexy name. The Nintendo NX was pretty cool. Yeah. They could have even played with that. Like N is in docked mode, and then X, you put the controllers on the side. It. The Nintendo NX is cool. Nintendo Switch is just like... It's like they don't have focus groups. Yeah. Or something. Like, it's probably... Know. You know what? It's probably one of those things where, like, the Japanese <sighs> name is super cool or something. Mm. And, like, super awesome and makes mm -hmm. a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. And then they just, like, ask that dude in accounting who speaks English, like, Hey, yo, what should we call it? And he's like... Oh, uh, hold on a second. I just gotta, I just gotta switch my... Uh, Thing to speakerphone. They're like, sorry, what was that, Switch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Apparently the audio is borked again. Yeah, I, I don't know what we're supposed to do about that. So. Okay. Mic uh, problems are like, okay, what's worse, mic problems or printer problems? Uh, wow, it depends. Do I need to print something right now? Yeah, then and you're also problems. live on a show. Um... I don't, I don't know. I think they're both terrible. Um, <clears throat> let's see. We've got people saying printer problems. I mean, that means it's working, right? That was kind of a trick to see if people were going to answer the question. I guess so. <laughs> <coughs> this show, facepalm. I know, right? Okay, let's move on to our next topic. Yeah. With rage... This is interesting. Uh, so the original article here is from No Film School. With Razer's purchase of THX, we're one step closer to ultimate calibration. What? What? Um. What? I don't really necessarily think that that is going to have anything to do with anything. Okay. I mean, this is oh, this, I mean, this is great. Okay. So wouldn't it be nice if we had a laptop with image quality that looked reasonably close to that of its broadcast monitor? I really doubt that Razer's what? acquisition of THX has anything to do with having their laptops what? be broadcast monitor quality, have broadcast monitor quality displays. Like the cost of putting a broadcast monitor quality display in one of these. Like, I, I love the Razer Blade, and I think it's a great laptop, but already they could have put a better display in the Razer Blade, and that could have been done fairly easily based on what's available in the market, and they didn't. So I, I don't think they're going to run out and buy THX so that they could certify their, their displays to sort something. Okay, hold on. So anyway, in 1983, George Lucas created THX to make sure Return of the Jedi felt right in theaters. THX has been certifying audiovisual systems ever since. <clears throat> um, Panasonic TVs, Onkyo AV receivers, Lincoln cars, kind of, etc. So Razer CEO Min Lang Tan and THX CEO Tai Ma Taylor said neither brand will be going away and the two companies will continue to
They're going to have their own direction, their own customer base, and they're going to be operating their own management with their own vision and so forth. So Razor plans to retain all of THX's existing 50-person staff and will hire 10 to 15 more people to expand their core certification business. So they want to sell more certs. <clears throat> so you shouldn't see any THX by Razor or other such cross-branding. Um, they see a lot of potential to have the expertise of THX applied in new categories like virtual reality and spatial surround sound. And Razor CEO added that THX's patents in those areas might be valuable. Um, this is just weird. Min Lang Tan also said that while they are one of the biggest when it comes to headsets, they haven't really expanded having the best out there, which as Min knows, I most assuredly do not agree. That's with kind that of a funny quote at all from the guy that makes Razer headsets. Um, they haven't expanded their audio line because they're just so focused on having really good stuff. No, no, themselves, Razer. Oh, seriously? Yeah, because they're intent on having. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no, we killed Luke again. <laughs> 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 So I, I get a lot of people asking me about X, Y, or Z, and the reason for it is that the conclusion for every Razer headset review that I can do is always the same. We also don't review Turtle Beach headsets. It's always like, yeah, it's okay, I guess, for the price, but the sound signature is awful. It's a mess. Or Astro headsets. Um, yeah, Astro. They don't like us. <laughs> Astro doesn't like us at all. Um, Boy, that was a terrible product I reviewed, and they sure <laughs> didn't like my review. At least Razor's still willing to talk to us. Negative reviews of their products from time to time. Yep. Um, so basically, I, if, if I had to interpret this somehow, um, Razor, with data investment money, needs to grow their business, and the business of certification is something they've already indicated that they're interested in. So things like the Razer co-branded cases from NZXT and Antec, uh, things like Razer Edition systems from the likes of Main Gear. Um, yep. So they've already demonstrated that this is something that they're actively working on. So now they have a dedicated subdivision of the company, sort of like a sister company, like an owned company and a a child company, is it called? It's a parent company, a child company? I don't know. Anyway, the point is they own THX, and so we can expect to probably see, uh, given that they're expanding THX's staff by 20 plus percent, so, so we're going to see a lot more like, you know, ASUS ROG Swift monitor certified by THX, or maybe like, um, you know, it's, it's something Razer's never really done in the past, so you'll see uh, while um, HP do is it Har Harman Kardon? Harman Kardon. Harman Kardon. Been uh, doing we've that for seen a long time. Altec Lansing like oh, design. That used ones to be like on. every every laptop that happened to be silver. I don't know why. This no, this was a thing for like two years. Every laptop that was silver colored would have an Altec Lansing badge. It was a thing. Um, is oh. is that a pro or a non-pro? Flip. Look at look the at bottom. His butt. Look at the bottom. Is there an XLR input? No, that is not a pro. We will not be able to hot swap it, but thank you. Uh, if you can get a pro, that would be swell. <laughs> Colton tries to do things. Get pro, Colton. Oh. Uh, you know what? Speaking of getting pro, we wouldn't be able to be professionals at this if it stream and our sponsors. Mac Weldon, which is why I've been very careful that I haven't been Spilled food on spilling shirt. anything on my shirt. All right, so Mac Weldon's actually a new sponsor for us. Uh, Mac Weldon believes in smart design, <laughs> premium fabrics, and simple shopping. They have underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants that are super comfortable to wear. We are wearing some of their stuff right now. That is bolded in my talking points. Thank you for that, Colton. Otherwise, I might have missed that. So I'm actually wearing just it's like a, it's like a simple kind of like pocket on the front kind of it's very comfortable. Is this a polo? You don't know clothes, do you? It's, it's a polo, though, right? I actually don't know. You don't know clothes either. It's, it's the polo, buttons don't no, go all I the way down. I thought polo was short for pullover. No. Really? P O L O. <laughs> it's 
not sure if we pull over. So they have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means that they help eliminate odors. <coughs> That's actually really cool. So I don't know yes. if you guys know this, but silver itself, like silver the element, is naturally antimicrobial. That's why yes. a lot of people put silver things in their water cooling yep. loops. Uh, because if you have silver fittings, actually silver fittings don't necessarily work the best because the silver um, can actually come off over time just from the water flowing over it. And then when you go to reuse them, there's actually no silver ions left in the loop. Anyway, the point is people will put like a little silver coil in the reservoir sometimes, which releases silver ions into your loop, which actually just naturally kills microbes. So, yeah. so there you go. It's like actual science, the whole like silver being no, clothes. antimicrobial thing. Yeah. Now in your pants. <laughs> and they want you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it and they will still refund you. No questions asked. Pretty cool. Not only does Mack Weldon's underwear, socks, and shirts look good, they perform well too. Good for working out, going to work, going on dates, and just everyday life. That's good that their clothes is good for everyday life because that's usually when I wear clothes. So head over to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using offer code Tech, Tech Tips. Tips. Whoops. I always do that. I'm like, wow. Well, no, I was pointing at the URL that time. Uh, okay. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking with it. All right. Also a sponsor on the show today is iFixit, your complete DIY electronics repair solution. I actually whipped out my iFixit kit as well as iFixit.com when I repaired my Wii this weekend. So I used um, this Phillips head. I used this socket just to extend my Phillips head to get at one of the... Uh, actually. I, I realize sponsor spots probably aren't the right time for this, but here's some feedback on how they could improve the next revision of their kit. Oh, no. um, a nice low profile extension for the bits is sometimes nice to reach into those, those hard yeah. to reach areas because as much as I love the knurled thing on the screwdriver, see right here, it's actually really good. It's a lot better than the last gen screwdriver. This could stand to be longer and slimmer so that you can get into deeper things a little bit better sometimes. So, so, so they could leave the neural there and then turning the neural would turn the extension. No, I just want an extension, yeah. So, <coughs> so kind of like this socket that sometimes I put bits in in order to make them a little bit longer. Yeah. So I used that. I used my small, my mid-sized tri-wing. And I think that was pretty much it. Is tri-wing oh. on the Wii? Uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because Nintendo is a bunch of, bunch of jerks. Yeah, apparently. They just want you to not be able to take things apart, but that's okay because iFixit doesn't give any spits about <laughs> uh, companies not wanting you to take your stuff apart. Yeah. Actually, no, I used a couple more things. I used my tweezers and I used my metal spudger in order to remove some things. So basically, the ProTech Toolkit includes the 64-bit driver kit. It includes suction cups for taking off displays, an anti-static wrist strap, some of their pry tools, uh, um, anti-static safe uh, tweezers, as well as reverse tweezers. Those can be pretty handy. Uh, their metal spatula thing, their spudgers, as well as one of these little Which like, one of these nifty pry tools. Which one of these do you improperly use the most? <laughs> Oh, all of them. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the point of a versatile tool, is that yeah. you just kind of, like, attack <laughs> the problem for, with it. Yeah, use it for whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. All, of their, all of their parts are, or, <clears throat> excuse me, all of their tools are backed by a lifetime warranty, and they have great guides on their site that make our lives a lot easier. And the other one, and the other one, and the other one, and the other one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Give me that one. Give me that. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh Doing this swap in real time, like I think I think XSplit might might like get confused, and really? it's and it's more likely that it's the cable than the mic anyway, which is just sort of a sort of an interesting. Do we want to try it anyways? I don't know because it. Do you want to do the sponsor spot first? Yeah, we chance destroying the show if we do that. So cable well, no. mod. Woo! Yay! I used cable mod cables and compensator today. Yep. So that was good. I use their custom cables whenever I need to do like a really, really compact build. What is this even? What did he hand open me? Open it up. All right, I'm gonna Get open it Get in there. So cable mod cables are made to order. Their notable features include, but are not limited to, their mod flex sleeving, which is softer than traditional nylon sleeving and thinner than cloth braiding. It actually looks sick. You'll notice cable mod cables in use on like most of our case reviews, many of our build blogs. Uh, they are 100% heat shrink free, which means that the sleeved portion of the cable, what is he doing? Goes all the way into the housing, so you don't have any of the heat shrink stuff, that plastic stuff sticking up around the end of the connector. 
Their invisible wires feature means that you cannot see through the braiding. So the wire inside could be any color and you would actually have no way of knowing that, although I believe they are black. Don't quote me on that. I've never actually had one of them fray to the point where I could see through it. And then I'm going to have to yell at Colton about my talking points because this is great. Easily bend and flex to your liking, superb flexibility. That is the same thing as mod flex sleeving, softer than traditional sleeving, thinner than cloth braiding, more flexible. Yeah, Colton is, Colton is just, he's dying. He's actually fallen down, he has died. So he, he and Luke are both dead. So we are down to 13 people here at Linus Media Group. Um, they also, the, the, probably the best thing about Cable Mod though, is their configurator. So you can go over to their website. I Got use it. this thing all the time. So whenever I'm doing any kind of, uh, oops, global store configurator. <sighs> Oh, I opened up Have that. Have you seen these? Go to Global Store. Okay, cool. Custom PSU cables. So basically you go in, you put in your, your power supply, you put in what kind you want, blah, blah, blah. Let's say I got one of these and I got one of those. They've got pretty much everything, which is pretty cool. And then you pick whatever things you want and then you specify the length that you want. And then you can even, which is really cool. Here, let's continue the next step. Check this out. You can individually select the colors of every wire. Yeah. So you kind of like paint it. You just go blah, blah, blah. You know, I want like a, you know, dank ass, like whatever this would be kind of thing going on here. You can do that. Cable Mod might advise against it, but they will definitely ship that to you if you so desire. So the configurator is really cool. And this is a relatively recent addition to their portfolio. They actually have their sleeved external cables now too. So this is an ethernet cable. And then I think Luke is also running out to grab uh, a power cable. Wow, that one's really vibrant. So this one uses the cloth braiding. This one uses a nylon braiding, but basically they're like really clean power cables, ethernet cables, all kinds of external cables. So your desk cable management can look as good as your systems cable management. You want to take that too? Sure. Thank you. And for some reason, my cable mod lower third wasn't there. So let's go ahead and bring that up. So head over to cable mod, bit.ly slash cable mod PPC, and you can save 20% on all cable mod products over at, I think that's performance PCs. And I'm getting the nod from Colton, who's supervising me because he's not sure if I'm going to do all this stuff right. I think he didn't know. I think he knows we're going to do it wrong. If the discount isn't active yet, check back later. That, that will be up. So cool stuff. Hooray. All right. Should we move on and actually like do some topics maybe? Are we going to try to hot swap the mic? Uh, oh, man, I'm super sketched on that. Um, Cause like levels will need to be adjusted and like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it. Apparently the discount is active. So that's cool. Go check that out. You guys. Nice. All right, Tesla reveals Autopilot 2.0 available on all new cars, including the Model 3. I wonder how long until like some guy buys the Model 3 and is completely against Autopilot and their kid tries to rip all the tech out and see what they can do with it. Because it comes with mm. like uh, some pretty intense hardware. They call it a NVIDIA GPU Titan supercomputer. Like, it's pretty intense. And considering the cost of the car and the fact that you get an entire car and it has that in it is actually kind of interesting. Honestly, that's something that I've always had a hard time figuring out. Why it is that when I'm buying a $3,000 TV, it doesn't have a $200 processor in it. Why don't you just make it $3,200 <laughs> and put a proper processor in it? Like, you, honestly, though. Same thing with cars. Like, why is it that any car made in the last 10 years doesn't have an incredibly fluid interface? Yeah. No excuse. I just spent $35,000 on this. Why didn't you spend, a, and, and that, that's the thing, like going back five years. Even. I wanted to do a video, like, okay, so way back when we first started doing car stuff, the first car thing on our channel was some BMW thing that I did at CES. And then I wanted to do a follow-up, which is where I compared my car to newer, similarly priced when they were new um, cars that were on the market. And yeah. I wanted to compare them as a car tech episode, like car tech through the ages, like, okay, my car is from 2009, so I think this was 2015. We'll go like in the last six years, 
how much has improved. Like, let's, let's look at how the automotive industry paces through things. Apparently, not at all or negatively sometimes. Um, th there are some like newer cars which are pretty awesome, but at that point in time, we got in contact with insert manufacturer here, because honestly I don't remember who it was. I want to call it the wrong one, so whatever. Um, and their car had a smaller screen and less features than mine at the same price as when mine was new. I was just like, what? And to be clear, <sighs> there is some better stuff coming. Oh, and there is some better stuff out now. But like, yeah. it's some of them are still really brutal. And that one was pretty bad. And I still feel the same way about TVs. Like, why do TVs still have input lag? I, I don't care how much image processing you do. Put a better processor in it! Just, to, just put a better one in. <laughs> I mean, I went off about that on the uh, the video I did of LG's eight thousand dollar signature series. Where I'm just like, they're like, yes, the priority was image quality. I'm like, that's nice. Prioritize everything. It's an eight thousand dollar TV. Yep. Prioritize everything. I don't expect to have a crummy gaming experience on a product that costs as much. Um, so this picture here, also from the electrek.co article here, shows you what a Tesla will be able to see with all of the sensors with which it is Everything. now equipped. So eight cameras, three of which are front-facing, better ultrasonic, and a 40 times more powerful onboard computer. And they're calling it an NVIDIA GPU Titan supercomputer. Does that mean it is actually based on, like, a GP two o something. What what is it? GP two hundred. GP two o one. I wouldn't remember. be surprised because at that like really weird. I don't know if any of you guys saw this. I periscoped it, I think, and I guess that means that it was on my Twitter because I didn't have access to the main Twitter then. But when I was at Computex, there was this really weird Nvidia announcement meeting, and it was like a tiny little room, and it wasn't really done all that well to be completely honest. But they're talking about machine learning, and something that they kept on pushing but would not answer was that they wanted to do more stuff with their Titan. Talking about Pascal very specifically. Right. And they're talking about how like, oh, we've spent enough money to get someone to, uh, was it Mars they were saying? Like we've spent so much money developing this stuff and there was a big underlying thing that was like, yeah, you're all here for Computex, but we spent a lot of money developing this stuff and it wasn't necessarily all for you. Right. There was like, that was definitely an under it in your face but it was the unspoken like there's other stuff going on so yeah. i wouldn't be surprised at all if this is pascal based so it'll reach level three autonomy <clears throat> in the coming months and level four and five economy by 2018 <sighs> in vehicles produced today in 2016 so you still have to pay more so the uh, safety stuff is included for nothing but the autopilot convenience features were $3,000, and the new options also come at a price. So in order to get fully autonomous driving, you're going to have to spend $8,000 on the system. Um, okay, so if you're buying a Model 3, that's quite an extra add. Mm-hmm. Um, Tesla's moving away from the name Autopilot, that should be noted, since it's going full autonomous, and blah, 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 including the substantially greater. So they're calling the safety level substantially greater than that of a human driver. Uh, the eight surround cameras provide visibility around the car up to 250 meters. And like, well, it's a little bit of a bold claim because they don't have very much sample data compared to all the other cars ever. Yep. It kind of logically as we go on, will become, and already arguably is, safer than average drivers on the road. So this was exciting today. Large DDoS attacks cause outages at Twitter, Spotify, and other sites, including Shutterstock, which made it a little bit difficult for us to get videos edited today, but, you know, hey, you know, I'm sure they were, you know, doing something important. So do our notes even have... Like, uh, so they took down Amazon, Twitter, Spotify. A second attack has been reported. Sites were down for two hours before coming back up. And the way they achieved this was by attacking Dyn DNS, a public DNS service. Um, which is pretty intense. Yeah. So websites and services across the East Coast were shut down earlier in the day. And Dyn added that the attack impacted its DNS advanced services monitoring for customers, but it later resolved the issues. The Department of Homeland Security told CNBC that it is looking into all potential causes, potential causes. of the attack. 
I can tell them the potential cause. It's got cheese stained fingers. There was some seismic activity. Yeah, seismic activity. <laughs> it caused DDoS attacks. <laughs> Razor Blade Pro. Yep. Are you stoked? Do you care? Um, I requested a review sample, if that's what you're asking. Am it I looks thin and it has a 1080 in it. Stoked? I think stoked is a strong word. It has an Ethernet port, and I'm stoked about that. Ooh. Hell raw, yeah. raw, raw, yeah, baby. 2016, bringing Ethernet ports That's here. right. Bringing it back, yeah. sucka. I am interested in the fact that it features their new low-profile mechanical membrane hybrid switches. That's cool because in a laptop. while the blade switches are, like, acceptable, I don't think they're – I personally don't like them that much. Oh, I really like them. But compared to other laptops in its thickness, they're very good. Compared to other laptops at all – I'm not a fan. Okay, that's not really fair, because if we're going like, to pull the GT80 Titan out. Well, okay, I'm not. You know, full Cherry MX I'm not, Brown. I'm not counting that one. I'm not counting that one. I actually don't like that experience either, because that experience as a whole is just kind of terrible. I don't understand how they sold so many of those laptops. Have you ever, you've like you've tried to use it, right? Yeah. Like, it's not, it's not. <laughs> you, know they renege, uh. you know they reneged on the GPU upgrade commitment, right? Seriously? Yeah. I did not know. They that. had no choice. GTX 1080 replaced 980M. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had no choice. Yeah. Like, it was a completely different ball of wax. Yeah. There was no way for them to power or cool it. So apparently, it I, I talked to the U.S. office about it, apparently they worked it out so that GT80 Titan owners could work out some kind of a deal to, like, upgrade. There was, like, an upgrade program for the laptop itself or something. But, like, yeah, what a bad situation. That's yeah, pretty brutal. Um, okay, so some more some more specs for the Razer Blade Pro. I mean, the one thing I'll say about the new Razer Blade Pro is that this is one case where it's actually justified to like do a reboot, calling it the new Razer Blade Pro because they have had a Razer Blade Pro before. No, no, the original Blade Pro had that switchblade thing, where it was like a display on the touchpad, the glass touchpad, You're the smooth soft. glass touchpad that was off to the right. You're getting soft. I don't consider it a real product. You're getting oh. Oh. I consider it a tech demo. I don't think they sold a lot of them. No. Have you ever see. seen no. a Blade Pro? I've even tried to tell people about it. Because I remember like we reviewed it where I, no one has any idea what I'm ever talking about. It had like a 760M or like a stupid. 660M in it stupid or something. Laptop. Like it had an awful GPU in it. That thing on the side 17 was 17-inch so display. Doomed. Weird side-mounted. Like, so Doomed. I get it. Okay, reboot, proper GPU, 17.3 So inch. you're talking like Tomb Raider kind of reboot. Yes. I'm talking like rebooted, like new Tomb Raider, new Razer Blade Pro. Can you get on board with that? But they didn't call it new Tomb Raider. They just called it Tomb Raider. That's true, but that's kind of worse. Like if they just called it Tomb Raider 2013, we'd all be a lot less confused. And I don't think anyone's confused, though. I think that was like the one time that actually sort of worked. Let's see. So they're just calling it new. Well, okay, so I'm still not. I'm still not. And super like happy that was it. a pretty significant amount of time, I think, for Tomb Raider. Yeah, it was like 20 years. How long has this been? Uh, four? like four, four, five, something like that. I guess it is tech hardware. Yeah, but like that's an eternity in tech. Yeah, yeah. I still hate the name, but I see where you're coming from. So 4K uh, display valid. with an LED backlight, as if they were gonna. What else would they be backlighting it with? Um, <laughs> it's a touch screen. <laughs> Nuclear uh, power. Nuclear, yeah, it's like, yo, we're gonna Radiation. put we're gonna put CCFL backlighting into a laptop for the first time in the last five years. You have to swap them out. <coughs> we we wanted our laptop to be super thick and bulky and have an uneven backlight, so yeah. we we went CCFL. No, they're just trying to make Fallout Four more immersive. We wanted lots of heavy metals in our laptop so that you know you could rock out to like heavy metal. Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. GTX 1080 with nine gigs of GDDR5X. It's an unusual configuration. Core i7 is 6700 processor, so that is a desktop grade processor, which is what? very interesting. Okay. Up to 32 gigs of dual channel memory, DDR4, and 512, one terabyte or two terabytes of storage in RAID 0. Our videos are so clickbait now that I don't know how I'm going to find this because I don't know what it was called. What are you looking for? But uh, the the event that I went to in London. Uh, oh, uh, 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 um, mobile GPUs are dead. It's fucking 
clickbait. Um, anyways. Well, it's true. <laughs> I, 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 ish. Sure, ish, yeah. Um, uh, like, I don't... I do not think that was the spec that they said the 1080 was going to be. So no. that's something new. Well, the 1080 is customizable. I actually got a really interesting email from uh, Sasha Krohn. I remember Sasha from uh, from his BitPhoenix days. Yep. But he saw my video of the... Um, oh, he's from he's there now. Yeah, he's at Asus now. He saw my review of the Sager Dual 1080 SLI laptop, and he sent this memo out to me. Uh, as far as I know, the total uh, TDP for the GPU is around 220 watts for mobile 1080s. I don't know if he should be saying that he said this. Oh. Because at the event that I was at, it was like... They were not talking about TDPs for things. Well, basically, oh, am I? Why do you tell me this then? Hold on a second. May I ask what prompted this message? Blah 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 blah. blah. Like I don't know, but like PC Per and other people were like, "Hey, what are the TDPs of things?" And they were like, "No, definitely not." So I don't. Oh. Thanks, Ryan, for well, the good question at the at the meeting. That was. What I, we know is that the TDP for the mobile GTX 1080 is configurable. What I oh. know and what you don't know is that it is very configurable, mm. depending on how much um, thermal dissipation the notebook is designed for and how much power the notebook is designed to provide. So whatever the manufacturer sets it to, the GPU will try and get the most out of the power and thermal budget. So what I will definitely be doing with the Blade Pro is putting it head to head against a thicker style laptop that has a GTX 1080 mobile edition in it. I wonder if you can beat it out. I can beat out anything. Like water cool it. We could try water cooling it, yeah. We should try to make the best dock ever made for a Razer Blade Pro. I'd be kind of down. And when actually. you dock it, it like you water cool it. We should just dock. do like the best laptop dock ever. Like I don't know exactly how we would do it, but I don't like, know. hmm. What if you just like peltiered the crap out of the bottom and made it like really <sighs> cold? Peltier cooling is a nightmare. I know. Because it's more okay. So a lot of people have asked why I've never done a tech cooler video, TEC cooler, um, thermoelectric cooling, Peltier. Um, the reason is that most um, the way that most people think Peltier cooling works is not really the way that it works. So there's more to it than just like you put a Peltier on something and like let's say a CPU and the CPU runs really cool. So you actually have to dissipate not only the heat produced by the CPU, yeah. but also the heat produced on the hot side yeah. of the Peltier. It's pretty brutal. So let's say you've got uh, a you know, 130 watt CPU, something along those lines. Okay, so you have to have a cooler that can dissipate 130 watts of heat. Then, and this is where it gets really cumbersome, you can't just put 130 watt Peltier on it. It doesn't work that way. You need something like double or possibly triple the capacity if you want to see really low temperatures, like if you want to actually justify the fact that you're using it. If you use one that is underpowered, you will actually end up with the Peltier acting as an insulator. And you will end up with CPU temps that are hotter than what you would have if you weren't using a Peltier at all, and you will eventually burn out your tech. There's also condensation issues. There's condensation issues, and there are power issues. Oh, yeah. So why are you trying to tech cool? There's a question you have to ask yourself. Are you trying to tech cool because you want super low temperatures? Or because it's and if, freaking sick. And if that's the case, then go phase. Because <laughs> tech cooling <coughs> is can be can be cheaper than phase. Noise. But okay, I'll, I'll get to that. So tech cooling can be cheaper than phase, but it also has the potential to fail catastrophically. <clears throat> because your CPU will overheat very, very quickly with a Peltier that stops working on top of it. And the configuration is complicated. You'll still need to insulate. It's like kind of a pain in the butt. And if you're concerned, and it's, so it's less reliable than phase change. Remember, phase change is what runs your fridge. Like phase change is like appliances stuff. Like it's pretty- That's why it's loud. It's pretty stable technology by this point it in is. time. The other thing is that while phase change is loud, 
mm. tech cooling because now all of a sudden you have a 450 watt heat load sitting on your CPU to cool. Tech cooling ends up pretty loud too. The way people used to do it was by buying Meanwell 320 watt power supplies and then if they had a really powerful tech, they would buy a couple of them. Those things are freaking loud. They're like server power supplies. Yeah. Nowadays, we have power supplies that technically could run a system and a tech, but what we still don't have is power lines in your system actually designed to carry that kind of current without overheating. So you would have to like custom wire up like an AX1500i, and even then, I don't think Corsair is gonna sign off on putting random stuff like that on their power supply because it's an incredible load and there's a reason that modern power supplies even if it's done virtually have their rails divided so uh random aside really quickly yeah. we'll get back to this uh when i was at twitchcon randomly mostly for fun i guess uh i stopped by some booth who luckily didn't know who i was because i ran away afterwards um but they were selling cpu coolers that were tech coolers they were cpu coolers and then they had six pin power that would go into the side of it. And I saw that and was just like, what the heck? Yeah. And uh, Nontech has a review up. I wonder how he did his conclusion because when I was standing there, not only do you have this weird cable going into the top of the cooler, which is the worst possible place for that to be in terms of like aesthetic cable management stuff, um, but it didn't seem like it did that well. Um, they did a demo in person and I was like, eh, but like I can't. The non tech review, which we're just gonna like pull up on screen. You guys can check it out, it's actually a pretty good read. Uh, core temperatures, uh, blah blah blah. Measured so this is with a 60 watt load, so it's a pretty low power CPU. Let's see, do they here we go? Uh, here we go. So let's say a hundred watt load, and if you're overclocking, that's not even so you can see D15. it goes from being the best performing to falling way, way behind. To be fair, its size compared to a D15 is that's a that's a big difference yeah it is a lot smaller than a d50 so it is smaller but if you're if you're okay if you're, putting, if you're tech cooling i'm assuming we're not talking 100 watt load we're talking 150 watt load at least and all of a sudden it's like pretty close to the am is closer to the amd <coughs> wraith than it is to an octo nhp 15. <coughs> And like, which is like a box cooler. I mean, it's a good box cooler, but it's a very good box cooler. But let's yeah. get real, it's a box cooler. And like, you have to plug that six pin into the. It's so derpy. And I don't know. The more you load a tech, the worse it performs, and the hotter it's running, the less efficiently it runs. Like, there's a bunch of problems with tech cooling, and there's a reason that it has never happened. So there you have it. Apparently, the sound cut out right after I said, "I can't." So people were like, can't what? You can't even? Oh, dead memes. Um, AMD announces their Q3 2016 financial results. Hey! Uh, no, no, that's just their stock price. Oh. Sorry, no, they hey, lost. Hey, that's also good, though. They lost a bunch of money. Oh, but they lost less, maybe. So 1.3 billion revenue, gross margin of 5%, Ooh. and a net income of minus $406 million. Oh. So, um... Oh. They have more revenue, but as far as I can tell, they straight up just bought it. <laughs> they could have literally bought, like... They did worse than buy. They could have bought money, and then they'd be better off than if they hadn't. I'm pretty sure if they bought, like, American dollars and then just transferred them into Canadian... Basically, or... they sold $5 bills for $3... No, like two dollars, yeah. Oh. For to make up the difference between, yeah. Um, so oh. so there's that. Oh, man, see, oh, I thought they were doing better than that. Because they're selling lots of GPUs. So I mean, your this 400 is, series is good. Okay, this is coming in a video very soon. I actually have a video that I'm calling the Viewer's Choice Award PC. Yeah. Where I go through all of the Amazon sales data for oh, yeah, this, last month. No, this is month. really interesting. Really cool video. You should um, seriously all watch this. Yeah. All of our Amazon affiliate sales data, and I pick all the most popular components. Well, I don't pick. You guys pick. Yeah. Based on what people are buying, I sift through and find all the most popular components for every category, CPU, motherboard, case. And what's really cool about it is that I end up with a Was very- Was it all compatible? Yeah. 
I ended up with a fully compatible, totally sensible <laughs> gaming config. Yeah. That's like as good as anything I could have picked out. <laughs> good job. The bad news is that I... It was probably I, the most generic thing No, ever. No, no, it was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Fantex uh, 400S. Oh. Like a 6700K. That's pretty like, generic. No, it was like pretty, pretty BA. Anyway. Fantex 400S is like, okay, Fantex is kind of the, they're, they're kind of rocking the case game right now. They're like Corsair when cases first started getting cool. Corsair like kind of started all this. So I ran through, just because I had all the numbers in front of me, I ran through some, some additional numbers. I was just kind of curious. In our viewer base, what's the, what's the market share like? NVIDIA versus AMD, uh, both in terms of units sold and in terms of revenue. And what I found was actually pretty terrifying. I, um, I'm just gonna see if I can, maybe I'll just bring it up right, right now. I'll bring up the actual numbers because I don't want to say something wrong. AMD 400 series cards are really good. To be very clear, we don't, we're not hating on the cards. No, like what? Uh, not a thing. It's, it's been frustrating, like talking to <clears throat> friends and family and like, random people outside of just videos that we make for LTT, people be like, oh man, I need a 1080, but it's really expensive. And I'm like, why? It's so powerful. You don't know why. And then I have to like fight and talk them down to a 1070, which is still ridiculous. Ugh. I, th I think the thing is like no, no one wants to like be that guy with a 400 series AMD card But then we just did testing on Battlefield 1 spoiler alert. Holy crap. The AMD cards did real well. Yeah, don't turn on DX 12 <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure AMD it made no difference and Nvidia it, uh, it was slightly worse I think I don't know and don't go on lower medium settings John figured this out what the heck? Low and medium settings introduced like artifacting and all this other bogus. You'll have to watch the video to like see what's going on. But that was yeah, that's coming that was soon. Weird. Yeah. Um, so video card market share last <coughs> month by units was eighty-seven point seven percent Nvidia, twelve point three percent AMD, <coughs> and by revenue, this is where it gets really scary: ninety-five point one percent Nvidia, four point nine percent AMD. Now, with that said. The stuff that people were buying in general skewed towards the high end for stuff, things that people were buying on our affiliate code. So bear that in mind. But what you guys also have to understand is much like we were talking about on the WAN show two weeks ago, where Samsung is saying is really confident that SSDs can overtake hard drives um, in the economy segment of the market because hard drives have a fixed cost. You have to buy platters. You have to have motors. You have to have magnets. Whereas, so, so you can only build a hard drive for like 40 bucks at the very cheapest, no matter what capacity it happens to be. A video card has a fixed cost. You have to have a PCB. You have to have some RAM. Even if you have a lower amount of RAM, you still have to have like RAM packages, RAM dies. You have to have so the connectors. You have to have the license, minimum licensing associated with an HDMI port. Like there's all of this stuff. <coughs> you have to put some copper on it to cool it and a fan. And when your chip is bigger and more expensive. That's right. So when your video card can only be sold for like 110 to $250, which is AMD's entire viable product stack right now, you incur the same overhead as someone whose product stack goes all the way up to $700. So when Nvidia sells a GTX 1080, the cost of that fan, that $3 fan, is a much lower proportion of the overall sale than it is for AMD, where it's like, you know, 3% of the cost of the card. It's like, it's significant now. Um, so when you look at AMD's revenue numbers and you kind of go, oh, they're, maybe they're selling lots of GPUs, it's not as profitable. Yeah. And that's a big problem. Yeah. Um, oh, I really hope Zen does well. Me too. Although, I'm like selfishly not excited for it to come out. Because then, for everything, everyone's going to want an entirely other set of benchmarks. <laughs> Because they're going to want the other platform's results. No one cares right now that everything's just tested on Intel and it's fine. Yeah, that's but like, true. like I did, we just did Battlefield, and I did like, 
or John, sorry, John. John did uh, graphics card testing, total system RAM testing, VRAM testing, uh, like CPU core testing. Now we're gonna have to do CPU core testing, other type of CPU core testing, other type of IPC test. So like is it figuring out which speed matters on different things. Oh. Uh -huh. Press F, pay respects. So many benchmarks. Uber's ad-toting drones are heckling drivers stuck in traffic. Oh my God. So the trans- <laughs> Oh my God. Like, look at these things. So the translation is, are you driving by yourself? Or something along those lines. Let me just, uh, let, me, let me have a look. Spanish to English says, driving by yourself? This is why you can never see the volcanoes. Uh, so it's a reference to the smog that hovers over the city and obscures two nearby peaks. Uh, so it's an ad for Uber Pool as part of Uber's big push into markets across Latin America. Wow. Uber does, what a way to get drones banned in your area. Uber does more business in Mexico City than almost any other city it operates in. So I thought that was pretty interesting. What a way. One of those is going to fall. And it's going to bounce off a car and then smash a window and then drones are going to be banned. Well, it won't be able to get over the wall into America, so. Oh. So he's kind of like imploded over the last little bit. We don't even have to make fun of him anymore. Yeah, I no, think I think he's point. screwed. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's just as well. That, that, that got too close for comfort. <laughs> I don't know if it's, I don't, I don't want to talk about politics, but I think we're, I think we're just screwed in that department, whatever happened. I'm not happy with anything going on down there. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Even the side game. I'm just like, nope, don't like any of it. Side nope. game? The, like, third-party stuff, whatever. Oh, the independent? Oh, well, yeah. the, the other, the non-two-party non system. Non-two-party yeah, thing, well. yeah. I just, the whole thing's just, uh, I don't know. Samsung commences mass production of system-on chip with 10 nanometer fin fet tech. Now, the thing to understand here what is What if these ones will be bombs? A nanometer is not necessarily, like a nanometer at TSMC is not necessarily a nanometer at Intel, is not necessarily a nanometer at Samsung. Uh, the way that it's defined is not quite as black and white as it used to be. Yeah. Um, so for example, one person's 14 nanometer is not necessarily, or could be equivalent, excuse me, to someone else's 16 nanometer. Uh, FinFET makes a big difference. With that said, this is 10 nanometer FinFET, but not everyone's FinFET is created equal. Um, but here's the quote, the industry's first mass production of 10 nanometer FinFET technology demonstrates our leadership in advanced process technology, says the executive vice president, head of foundry business at Samsung Electronics. We will continue our efforts to innovate scaling technologies and provide differentiated total solutions to our customers. Apparently allows up to a 30% increase in area efficiency with 27% higher performance or 47, or excuse me, 40% lower power consumption. So expect faster phones with less power consumption in a phone near you sometime that's, that's pretty soon. That's good. Speaking of phone near you, pretty excited to finally try the Pixel. Yeah, I hope it this shows should arrive up. pretty soon. I'm actually, and the more I hear about it, actually the more excited I am. So hopefully it works out. Maybe, maybe they'll have figured out how to make it so no, that when you not. go into the battery usage thing in Android. Oh no. It's it's not just full of oh, it's no. not just full of forty percent Android system that you don't know what's actually using no. the power. By the way, I did get your email. Do you think they figured that out? About the laptop. Do, do, do you think they door. figured that out yet? No. 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 No, you don't think so? Oh. No. All right. I did get your email about the laptops yes. next door, which like the WAN show is very well versed on at this point, and no one else has any idea what's going on. Yeah, the the browser wars. Yeah. Uh, I am still. I've got some more information. Okay. My here. Did you hear my whole like I'm leaving Windows Ten thing? Uh, yes, I think so. So there's so many like background processes and all this bullshit yeah. that runs that I'm just kind of done with Windows 10. So I was like, this has to be why that's going on. And it is. I was right. There are oh. random bullcrap things that are happening during the tests. It just so happens that two of them seem to have pattern at the same time and two of the other ones seem to pattern at the same time as well because I did some follow-ups and they mm. don't always... Like the two that did better on that one test, yeah. sometimes don't. Sometimes right. they will do worse. And they did better by like two hours. And sometimes right. they will do worse by like an hour or something. Right. So they're not better laptops. They just patterned better. So I need to figure out every single individual tiny thing to turn off 
and there are a lot of them. Wow, Windows 10. Oh my god, there's a huge amount of automated things in the background. Whew. Oh. Like, oh, it's not just my stream. Like, it's a thing, and it's crippling people. Like, and I've, I've done some more research on it. Like, like pretty low-end computers that you're like, or back in the day, you're like, oh, you're a Windows 7 computer. You couldn't have done Vista, but seven, or uh, XP computer. Yeah. You couldn't have done Vista, but 7's probably fine. You yeah. Throw it on, it's fine. No, 10 is not that way. 10 is more Vista-y. Where, like, mm. you need the horsepower. Right. And if you have it, it will do cool things and it will automate everything and everything in the back end is all nice and clean and tidy and stuff. Right. If you don't have the power, it's not very nice to you. And if you're, like, using a lot of your computer, it does not care. It will do whatever it wants completely regardless of what you're doing, which is frustrating. But anyways, it's coming along. All right. So <sighs> Microsoft Research demonstrates an actuator that allows feeling virtual objects in 3D space. Dun, 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 dun. So it's, a <coughs> it's a mechanically actuated handheld controller that renders the shape of virtual objects through physical shape displacement, enabling users to feel 3D surfaces, textures, and forces that match the visual rendering. Um, so they've published the results of their investigation in the proceedings of the 29th Annual Symposium on User Interface Software and Technology, and they demonstrated two such controllers, Normal Touch and Texture Touch. It's tracked in 3D to produce spatially registered haptic feedback. Now we just need incredibly powerful magnets, because I, I think so far that's the only way that I've uh, been able to figure out how they're going to do weight. Right. Cool. Yeah. The PS4 Pro is basically two PS4 chips, using one of them for old games and both for the Pro enhancements. So the original article here is from Games Radar, and um, so I. Ugh. SLI is back. Except, oh, sorry, Crossfire, Crossfire, Cross. Sorry. Crossfire. 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 Except also there's two CPUs, so like, Athlon MP is back. Hey. FX, FX platform is back. What, what was it? Quad FX, 4x4, <laughs> four 4x4 four, four four is back. Um, <coughs> Sorry, I'm dying. So I guess there's not really much else to say about that. I'm trying that. not to. Uh, games that support the new console will have a base and a pro mode, depending on the hardware they're played on. The ability what? to switch between the two comes from actually doubling the existing hardware. Wait, so are you going to have to select that? So we doubled the GPU size by essentially placing it next to a mirrored version of itself, giving us an <laughs> extremely clean way to support the existing oh. 700 PS4 titles. We just turn off half the GPU and run it at something quite close to the original GPU. Oh. Okay. So you double the GPU power while running the CPU at the same rate to ensure compatibility with older games. Okay. Okay. Um... PSVR is doing really well. We just skimmed over an article that was talking about that. It's selling... Yeah, 50,000 units in Japan in the first week. Although, Japan sales of a Nintendo or Sony or PlayStation, yeah. thing are not always like Still though, of... Still, I've, I've heard that it's doing pretty well in North America. And one of the reasons why ours was delayed is because it was sold out. Okay, fair enough. Like, it's... Mm, yeah. All right, well, I think that's it for the WAN Show. Thank you very much for tuning in this Bye. week. We will see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah. And I'm going to run the intro, but it's the outro now. Yeah. We should really, like, do, like, a, a thing where we pick up the couch and walk away with it or something. Did I, I say that? Oh, yeah, no, like you mean animated. A thousand years ago, probably. Never mind. No, no I, I meant in Protect your package. Protect your package with silver fibers in your uh, fabric. And silver your fabrics. Pecs. Protect your pecs. Mm.